What is up guys, Jared Campisi with my main man Dotto back in the Dotto garage with our manager Dozer up and he's got stuff to do apparently. Um, we are down to one of the final episodes guys of the Custom Daytona series. If you don't know what that is by this point, shame on you. Basically we're taking a beautiful Triumph Daytona 675R, we're customizing it and then we're giving it away once we're done. If you want to find out how it all works and be a part of the series, head on over to patreon.com slash campisi customs. It'll always be linked in the description below. This is one of the final episodes and we've got quite a bit to do, so let's get started. On Patreon, I asked the patrons, I said, um, I put up a poll, I said, do you guys wanna do carbon fiber parts for the bike or do you wanna do a power commander and get a custom tune and try to get more horsepower than four horsepower out of the $3,000 exhaust we put on the bike because the Triumph ECU flash was poopy. Told you. <laughs> and it was pretty much like a 50-50 split. Um, people were like, do the tune and people were like, no, add carbon fiber parts and blah, blah, blah. So you know, I said, you know what guys, F it, we're doing both. So <laughs> we're gonna try to squeeze all of this into the last couple episodes that we have here. Um, today we're gonna be installing the Power Commander 5. Dada was already looking up what all is entailed in this thing and believe it or not, it looks like it's about three times, four times more work than it is on the Panigale. And that's saying something. If you watch the Panigale series. What was that like, Dada? <laughs> He saw the directions and he was like, screw this. I'm not staying out here for this shit. Look at him. Dozer, we need the manager out here. Dotto <laughs> doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> he's running! <laughs> Careful, he's drooling. Oh, I didn't I have it. <laughs> okay, so apparently Dotto wasn't joking. Uh, teams is gonna start removing the seats. Um, I was just going through the instructions and it's a lot. We have to take the whole tail section apart, the seats have to come off, the, uh, the tank has to come off, the shift lever's gotta come off, the uh, front sprocket cover needs to be removed. We are gonna be rewriting wires, running them all throughout the entire bike. This is gonna take a lot of time. <laughs> Room service. <laughs> Let's keep in. Let's keep in. <laughs> All right, so seats are off. Thank you, teens. You did your job. I'm proud of you. Um, now we have to disassemble the entire tail section. We're gonna try to just take the top part off and see if we can get away with that. Um, but Dada was saying that he thinks they want us to put the power commander back here. And that's why we have to run wires all over the bike. Um, then we're gonna pop the uh, <clears throat> gas tank off and then we'll see where we're at here. So we got the bodywork off the tail section. So pretty much exposes everything. We're gonna be mounting the power commander right underneath here. The wires will be all fed down through here. Next thing is the fuel tank. Gotta take oh, that puppy off. I guess I should move this. Yep. <laughs> all right, one breather tube just came off. Hey, so we don't need that one. We're just gonna cut it off the bike because it's too much weight. <laughs> so the last thing, I pulled the uh, harness plugs off and both of the um, breather tubes. The breather tube, the breather lines. Um, the last thing that's left is this fuel line. Um, I put a rag down here. I'm not sure how much fuel is going to come out. Jared's going to tilt the tank back a little bit. Um, just make sure you don't hit anything on the back there. So we're going to pull this off. Nope. Just a little bit of drippage. Okay, that's not bad. So it's been running on fumes, basically. <laughs> I'm just going to put a plug on it so it doesn't leak any further. Um, we're going to be taking that back off to put the plug on, but it should be good. Tilt it forward a little bit. Yeah, yeah you see the fuel in there. So we're good to go. Long bolt. Wow. There you go. Jared just dreads putting stuff back together, and I just love taking stuff apart. So mm -hmm. that had to come out so you can pull the tank out. Which way do I pull it? You got This whole thing's got to come up like this. There you go. A tank. Don't drop it. You're leaking gas all over the place. Shut up. No, he's kidding. <laughs> Fuck, I hit you. See, there's plenty of gas in here, dude. Don't drop that. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. All right, try unpack. What's the next step? Park Mender. So the harness is going to be sitting <laughs> on this Christmas side, like this. Now they have it sitting in there like this underneath, okay? But I'm looking at it from also the tuner's point of view. So when you look underneath the seat, how easy is this port gonna be to get to? Um, this does come on Velcro so they can peel it off, but a lot of people when they do the install, they tie the wires really tight and then you have a problem getting the power commander out. 
So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the Velcro strips on, mount this underneath this section here, but I'm gonna leave some wire tucked underneath. You welcome, Jason. <laughs> so tomorrow's dyno after we're done uh, two-wheeling in the snow, um, we can get this puppy tuned. Tell me what's the problem, Gato? I want to put all these little rubber covers on the power command and realize that there's a huge gap here. It's not sealed and these screws are all the way out. Come on guys, get your shit together. So I'm gonna fix it. So we're mounting the power commander. We took a look at the directions. They say to put it this way, facing sideways. And we looked at it and we've decided that's just a stupid place to put it um, because then you have to take the seat off plus the rear cowl off to get to it. And what we did is swung it sideways. Dotto said you actually plug into it back here. Yeah, there's the port is right here now. It's easily accessible. You don't even have to take it off. And I left extra slack. So if Jason or whoever tunes it uh, wants to take this power commander out from back here, it can just slide it right out. And it gives us plenty of room. I zip tied nice. the wires. I ran them through in here. Yeah. And we got this beautiful harness with all of these nice plugs. Jarrett says we don't have to use any of them. So I'm just going <laughs> to shove them in here and hide them. And then we're done, guys. All right, so I took a bolt out of this. It goes to the chassis, it has all these grounds on top of each other there. We have to take this ground loop here and ground it with the rest of those. And then I'm gonna zip tie um, this line down here. That's gonna allow the power commander to be grounded properly. And the power is going to be through the harness, one of the harness plugs, uh, the positive. We also undid both terminals off the battery just to make sure. I didn't see anywhere that it said in a power commander install instructions to disconnect the battery at all. When you guys are working with electrical, even if you're just unplugging stuff, plugging them back in, messing around with the ground, you wanna take both leads off the battery and make sure you don't have any shorts or um, you don't ground something out when you shouldn't. So we're gonna get to that and then uh, we move on to the plugs. All right, so we got the uh, ground hooked in. Now he's just zip tying stuff down and then we're gonna start plugging in some of this stuff. Oh my God. So Dotto and I are over here reading directions and figuring all this stuff out, and I'm like, why isn't any of this being filmed? This is what's going on. Look, look at them. Huddled by the fire, talking the about vacations. Um, in the instructions here, and this is exactly why people don't uh, feel comfortable doing things on their own. Route the Power Commander 5 wiring harness towards the engine along the left side frame rail. Then they show the right side frame rail. So. Correct me if I'm wrong, any of you guys out there that are uh, technicians or are well knowledgeable on this. If you're sitting on a bike, my right hand should be touching the right frame rail, correct? So they show in a picture the right side and they say the left side. Yeah. So anyways, uh, we're locating a plug. It's a black three pin connector for the throttle position sensor. I located it, it's really tight. I'm gonna try to get this out so we can piggyback into the power commander and then we're gonna keep on moving. Next, we unplug the injector plugs. So there's one here, one in the center, and one here on the left-hand side. We have to unplug those, piggyback them through the power commander, and then move on to the next ones. So check it out, guys. Dado's getting stuff lined up. Those big-ass heavy uh, tables that we were dragging around last week, he got them all synced into the wall. They're going nowhere. He's gonna paint these bitches black too, right? Yeah, I'm gonna paint uh, all the wood part black. Uh, my mill and lathe, weighs a little over 500 pounds and I got this bitch up on a table by myself. Did you I, really? Yeah, I have pictures of proof. It was like 11.30 at night and I felt motivated. Who's 14 beers deep? <laughs> Don't lie. Don't lie. And I got this sucker up here by myself. I really did. Um, There's nobody here to help me, but I was safe about it. As much as I can remember. So it's, so it's on there and working. Uh, I'm just going through and I wanted to show you guys this. I have this massive drill bit. I have a big drill bit connect collection. Look at that. <laughs> that's actually huge. It just helped. That's how big it's Sasha's fingers are. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> and then check it out. He's got his Ducati up on a stand. His super sport he's working on. That thing's looking so good. And then his BSA's out. He's got the uh, tarp off of it. He actually put it on a little slider here so we can scoot it around the shop. Look how freaking cool this place is looking, man. Bikes on this side, looking really nice and clean. Starting off like a fabrication shop in here. And then we got these two idiots over there. Look at them. God only knows what they're doing. Also, we got, oh, we need more wood in there. We definitely need some more wood in there. Say no more. Say no more. <laughs> I love 
We don't have food to cook, which sucks. Yeah, Maybe the girls should leave and let us film. Some, yeah, we can get some shit done in here. God. So, um, once we get all the three of the plugs off, that'll be all the ones that you see in blue here. So that'll get rid of three more plugs from the harness, right? So then we'll have one, two, three, four, five more plugs left. No clue where they go. We're just gonna tape them up and forget about them. And we should be good to go. We should be fine. Seven horsepower. Now we got a fire going. Oh now we're cooking. They don't make these easy to get to, do they? Um, no, but I'm okay. I'll live. A uh, couple more drinks and... We'll be good to go. Oh, that feels good. I like done, the way that feels. Done deal. Now we got all three plugs out. Nice work. Is this soda? If this is beer, I'm not gonna drink it. No, it's soda. Yeah. Why is it foamy? I don't know, but listen. This is what Dada's drinking. <laughs> Just take a sip of it. Come on. Take a little sip. Is that straight? That's straight! There's no soda in that! <laughs> <laughs> Dotto, you sir! Oh. Or a man! <laughs> now here's the messed up part. According to them, earlier in the instructions, um, they said left hand side is over over here. Left hand frame, they have Left hand frame, yeah. yeah. So according to this, all this should be swapped backwards. <laughs> left and right, which when doesn't make any sense. But we're gonna plug it in, blow up the bike, and then go from there. <laughs> so Jared said I should probably explain this. So when I say the word piggyback, what that means is there's two harness plugs at the power commander and one harness plug at the main harness of the bike. There's also the unit, which in this case is the fuel injector. So what happens is we're gonna plug this guy into the injector this guy into the harness. So instead of the signal going from the injector into the ECU, it goes from the injector into the power commander, back into the harness, into the ECU. So what that allows the power commander to do is receive signal and control the signal um, before it gets to the ECU. Or it gets data from either the unit, which is the fuel injector or the ECU itself. So basically piggybacking is just bypassing, plugging in the power commander in line with whatever you're plugging into. In this case, it's our fuel injector. So I'm um, plugging each one of these wires in individually, like this. No, I'm not. They go in like this. Okay, make sure they click, they're plugged in tight. And once those are plugged in, we're gonna plug in each injector individually. And then we'll be done with that harness. This leaves us with one more, and we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> go ahead, sir. Why it's dirty in here. This guy's just shooting shit everywhere. Look at him. No F's given. Alright, so unfortunately, the harness for the crank position sensor is way down in there and it doesn't unclip at all. So, this fuel line is in the way. So, what are we gonna do? We're gonna unclip this fuel line, move it completely out of the way so we can get to that sensor plug. We're gonna piggyback it, plug it back in, put the harness all the way back in and then put the fuel line back in. My guess is we're gonna be leaking some fuel out, but that's okay, we're gonna clean everything up. Um, my sausage fingers don't fit, Jared's fingers don't fit. <laughs> that's really down there, so wish us luck. Yeah. <clears throat> so Sasha's fingers couldn't get his- Wait, 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 Jared's actually doing something. Hey, Sasha's <laughs> hey. fingers couldn't get his hands in there. That's so right. So we got my little girly hands. I gotta pull this gray part back, pinch this clip, Oh, there's fuel coming out. Jared's getting dirty. Holy shit. But how much are we going to let drip? How much is dripping out? A lot. Okay, then put it back in. We're going to shove a rag in there. There's very, very, very small amounts of room. Jared's pissed off because he got fuel all over him. No, I don't care. There's a little bit of gas in there. We're going to... Yeah, we're going to have to clean that up and dry everything off before we fire anything up. But So now that the harness is off, well, the plug connector for the fuel, fuel rail. Now I can move that all the way, right? I would just let it drip out Yeah. and we'll dry everything up. And then uh, once you move that out of the way, we're gonna use your fingers again yeah. to get that harness plug off. Once that's off, uh, it'll be the last of the piggyback for the power commander. And then we can move on to the oxygen sensor. All right. right, Jerry? Everything he said, yeah, this is what I was gonna say. <laughs> all right, guys, so this plug all the way down here, this harness, needs to come out so we can piggyback. This is for the 
crank position sensor. Yep. All right. Um, Jarrett, with his uh, small sausage fingers, <laughs> is going to get in there. I'm going to get in here and pry this little tab, and Jarrett's going to pull on his harness to get it unplugged, and then he's going to plug in the male and the female into this, and then we'll be done with this part. So check it out. All right, I'm going to get in there. Twist the tab. Okay, tab is pulled. Go ahead, pull on it. Boom, done. Got it. All right. Bring that harness up. We need that. That's Show what we them. needed. See how it's wet with fuel? We're going to wipe that off. <laughs> yeah, we got to wipe that off. We don't want fuel in electrical. Um, it's really tight down there, and we try to prevent a lot of that spillage from going out with the rag. Didn't work. We're going to dry everything up before we fire the bike up. Yep. This is why people don't do stuff on their own, because not only is it a lot to take in, but if you don't understand what you're doing or don't have the right tools, you'll screw something up. You don't want to mess around with fuel and electrical no. and not understanding where the connectors go. So so it's important we run these correctly. <clears throat> Got to get them underneath these other ones since it's the lowest one. We don't want them tugging on those other wires. It looks like a complete mess, but I swear we're really good at pretending at knowing what we're doing. <laughs> so Should I piggyback this one first or put this in? I would put this in first. Okay. So Jared's going to plug. This is way down. It's probably like eight inches from up here. All the way in there. The clip tab was on the top, right? Yep, okay. that's right. So Jared's going to go all the way in there and clip that in. I'm going to aid him with the screwdriver once he gets it aligned. Don't bend any of the pins. I know, I know. Ready? Yep. Done deal. That's in. plugged in. Ready? Yep. Now this female plug, we'll plug into that. Should be right there. Push. Is it tight? Boom. Yep. So I would push that down in there with the crank position plug. Ready? I can't fucking keep going. All right. I know it looks like a mess, but Jared did a fine job of spilling fuel. I mean, <laughs> plugging stuff back in. Um, the crank position sensor is piggybacked. All three injectors are piggybacked. Um, before we put everything back together, we have one more thing to do, and that's the oxygen sensor. So what we decided to do was we're not going to pull the sensor out of the exhaust. We're going to leave it in the exhaust, but the harness plug. Are you even paying attention over here? Hello? The harness plug is gonna get unplugged from the O2 sensor, and there's an optimizer that was supplied with the power commander that gets plugged in, so we're gonna leave everything stationary. If the new owner needs to use the O2 sensor, they don't have to go through the hassle of reinstalling everything, which is nice. This entire unit has to get disconnected because we have to take this cover off. Why? Because the oxygen sensor wire and harness is located behind this right i thought it was right here no uh, that's the side scene switch but good try mm. so the harness runs here. up through okay and what we need to do is take this unit off take this cover off unplug the harness we're going to leave the oem oxygen sensor and harness behind everything and installed Jarrett is going to do everything here because i'm trying to teach him a couple things and we're gonna plug in an optimizer, okay? So it doesn't throw a check engine light. Um, and then we're gonna reassemble everything. There's a little mark, a little dimple right there. You see it in the middle? Yeah, you can see it. Right I there. It. Mm -hmm. That is lined up with this crease here, telling you that these teeth have to be lined up. If you get this off even a little bit, then your shifter will not work properly. So we'll find out tomorrow when we ride us to the dyno. If the bike doesn't shift, or slams in the gear, we know whose fault it is. I got this loosened up. They're gonna pull this out all the way. Yep. And we're gonna remember where that dimple is so that we're not stuck in first gear all the way tomorrow. <laughs> Take the cover off. What cover is this, Jared? Sprocket cover. Counter shaft <laughs> sprocket cover. Hey, I still Here. said sprocket. <laughs> I know what stuff is, guys. I'm just not a mechanic. Okay, pull that out. Remember where you put it? Yep. Gotta yank it. Pulling the cover off? Yep. Pull down. There we go. There we go. Sprocket cover. We're gonna move this in. Move this out. Right there it is. There it isn't. Right here. Go ahead, unplug it. Would you look at that? Would you look at it? Well, that goes up. I hate you so much. I knew it went up. I hate you so much. <laughs> hey, Jarrett was right. Oh, when I'm God. wrong, I'm wrong. Yeah. I when was he's right. wrong, but he's still right because right. he gets it off. Yeah. All I, right. get her, I get her off. That's my job. All right.
Whoa. There you go. <laughs> disco, disco. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? Yeah. So now what we do is we cut this, we submerge it in fuel, and we set it on fire, and that's going to be the end of the episode. And we're done. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. All right. Now, the optimizer. This is the oxygen sensor side. Mm -hmm. This is really important. Do not shove this back down there, because if it gets caught in here between the sprocket yeah. and the chain, we're screwed. So what I like to do with something like this is zip tie it up in here so it doesn't come down. We're going to do that. But before we do that, we're going to plug in the optimizer. Here is the harness end of the oxygen sensor. Jarrett, would you get the optimizer plug? Yes, I will, sir. Out of the box. <laughs> Take 15. <laughs> this is the op... Don't you fucking do it. <laughs> Take seven. <laughs> we're getting loopy. Let's go. All right, guys. Here's the optimizer that was supplied with the Power Commander. What this is, is a male side of the plug for the oxygen sensor harness. And a female side of the plug. No, this is actually not the female side of the plug. What this is, is I assume these are resistors that are in there. Basically what this does is it plugs into the harness that says, it's okay bike, don't throw a check engine light, we'll make it through this together. Female and male supporting each other. No, it, there's no female part. No, just the males, the just, males roll. The males do everything. They're just, they're just, the check engine lights don't even stand a chance. You could use a flashlight right now, couldn't Boom. you? Boom. Done deal. Woo, optimizer. Yay. No females. <laughs> right? <laughs> this will have to get Natural shoved time. up in there. And I'm actually saying that we should take this and pull it up through. So really? it doesn't get caught up. Well, look, how, look how close it is to the chain. I think it's fine right there. Jared? That's a joke. I'm that gonna, was a joke, I'm guys. I'm going to punch you that in your female joke. parts. <laughs> All right, guys. So the fuel optimizer is up here now. This harness came from down here. We don't want it getting caught up in a chain and sprocket. All right, we'll tidy up that later. We made sure we put two zip ties just snug enough. We don't want to pinch this line here, but we put them in such a way that it keeps the chain and sprocket away from everything that comes down. It's really close tolerances in here. So basically what we're going to do is check out this shifter here. That's just dangling. What we're going to do now is put this bracket back where it belongs. We're going to put this... Thanks, manager. We're gonna put this ball and socket joint for the shifter back together, all right? We're gonna put the cover back on. We're gonna put everything back together, plug it all back in, put the fairings back on, reassemble everything, all that good juju. The dozer was a little angry in that last clip, so I had to come over and give him some love, and he said he's been doing a lot of TPS reports. Tax time, he gets really- Stressed out. He gets super stressed during tax time, look at him. <clears throat> so we're just putting everything back together now, putting the crank, <laughs> Crank Jesus. Sprocket cover, case back on. Um, we made sure all the wires are out of the way. Everything's good to go. And then we're gonna reattach the clutch assembly and we'll be good to go. Look how badass this tank is. We're gonna sand it. That might be a preview. <laughs> I love the smell of fuel in the morning. I actually do. Hold on. What's this bullshit? You gotta push the whole tip. No, hold on. Push the bracket. There we go. There you go. It's like a, it's like a baby. You read my mind. <laughs> Here comes More the gas. No! Oh, oh motherfucker. Shot all Did over it hit the you? place. Yeah. No, it didn't. All right, come yeah, on. and on your phone, on my hand. Come on. God damn it. Okay. Look, this gets boop, boop, done. Beep, beep, beep. Okay. We got the fuel line back on. It's tight, hopefully. I don't care because Jared's riding it first. These plugs here can only go in the One spot second. that they're designated to going. Boom, boom, done. We have two breather lines or vent yep. tubes. Um, this back. is the top and this is the bottom. Set it down. Boom. Let's get the bolts in. Before we reassemble the entire bike, we're going to fire it up, make sure there's no fuel leaks, make sure there's no electrical problems, and make sure that the bike actually starts. One thing is we had all the fuel lines disconnected pretty much off the fuel rail and the tank. So there's a lot of air in there. So it might crank a little bit longer than usual. Um, we're gonna look for, like I said, any leaks, any kind of issues, make sure it's a neutral, let's fire it up. No engine lights. 
got gas and we got ignition. So we're good. We don't want to run it long because we don't have anything open in here. Yeah. We don't want fumes. We're going to check for any leaks and stuff too. It's so. a beautiful 74 degrees I in here. I think we crushed it. Let's put it back together. Let's put it together.